Oh, she's on the phone. Are we on making reservations for Christmas Day? No. Or are we not? No. Oh, all right. <laughs> this is her job to write these things down. Make this clear. I'm going to try to write that for our next meeting day. Oh, well, okay. take that one right. this week. Our next meeting day. day. Yes. No, we're going to have a meeting day. We're going to be in the museum. This is this is oh, a, a different day, right? Okay. This okay. is an evening this meal. This is a special meal. Free, day. no business. It's going to be. It's, it's cheaper on Tuesday. We're going to do it Friday no, night. Don't say we're here. Do. The, the historical society is going to pay for everybody's meal. No. No, it's no. free of business. <laughs> That's just Jerry Harkin. Oh, well, I, I don't think they're going to pay for everybody's meal. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 I, I was just careless and overlooked that at our last meeting. But uh, Tommy said, just go to the cash register and tell them what you have. Uh, and when, when our, our February and March meetings will be at the museum. Johnny Wilbanks in January, the museum. Uh, and... Uh, the Historical Society, and it's true yoke fellows. Tommy said that one time or another that something was said at the Historical Society about our being in a relationship with the museum. But I wasn't, you were there, wouldn't we say anything? But we're part of the museum's work, and Johnny's going to come and tell us about it. Well, we'll come and he'll tell us about it. In February, Sheila Lentz is going to talk about the library gene genealogy. Now, I heard her do this. Uh, at her honorarium the other day, uh, and it would have been worth the price of admission just to hear about the genealogy in the library. And I told her I was so impressed that we would be building her a four million dollar library real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rowan, what day is that? The second Tuesday in February? Third. Third. The third Tuesday uh, in February. Yes. Those are meeting days. Third. Yeah. Third. Uh, dinners are whenever Pat lunches. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Sheila Lentz at the, library, at the uh, museum uh, on, in February. In March, probably, a meeting with Rayco and Corinth uh, on how to build and hook up a photo scanner. Uh, and uh, I see that uh, Christina's not here, uh, but uh, uh, Lamar is here. And he's going to ask all the pertinent questions. They're going to give him the answers. Well, he figures building a scanner can be done, but they told us a lot of things at Rayco we never thought of before, or at least don't know how to do it. How to hook it up to your computer, how to, how to make your, uh, your images, preserve them, keep them, share them, uh, and they, are, they want to tell us. Uh, actually, I was talking to a salesperson, uh, and she was really good at her job. And so the chances are pretty good that our March meeting will be with Rayco, uh, and uh, with our new archive, it would really be nice to have a way to scan and preserve the material. Uh, of course, the Latter-day Saints will do it for you, but they're busy. And let me, go let ahead, me, go ahead. Let me inject this. Dwayne Board has talked to the LDS church, and they're, they're interested in coming back and copying some more records, uh, pretty soon. And, and they're, gonna, they're willing to tutor us in getting our copying machine set up. And how to organize so, <clears throat> the material. So that they He we'll, says that they're interested in coming yeah. back and helping us get set up. Same couple, Lamar, or the same couple? I don't know if they'll be the same couple. couple the Pyramids? Oh. I wish they would. Uh, they, well, they, Steve uh, Waters is who we're talking with. Yeah. And he's the one, this is his area of the country. And he says they are definitely interested in copying our marriage records and all of that. And will tutor us how to go about organizing what we want. No matter what they do, we, we've got things. Uh, and uh, as Lamar pointed out, uh, we have all of those family histories in the vertical file in the library. And uh, things like that. Uh, things we need to get other than paper copies. And, uh, Finding a place to put it's going to be the problem. At least Dwayne did say last time he was when he was here at our meeting uh, that there should be a space where the Peterman set up for us to do the same thing. But uh, we'll see. Uh, it's uh, it's something that you've already approved uh, and even considered as much as three thousand dollars to get it done. Uh, is that what's the amount? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it made a lot more than that. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. That was an estimate. Uh, just, I just asked, could, could we commit ourselves to the project as opposed to paying for it that very day? I think we ought to wait and 
and hear what they have to say before we. I've got stuff picked out that I think will work, but I'd like for them to give us more guidance before before we actually order the computer and cameras and stuff. The the information that Marsha shared with me from them indicates that they are interested. They want to be part of this. They want to tell us how to do it as well. And I think we we can use the information, the assistance. Uh, today's meeting. Uh, what do I need to tell you? Okay, here's what I was going to tell you. Odalene is here because we ought to know uh, who the, our archives were named for. Uh, it was for Odalene Cole. Uh, and she also loves us. Uh, Tommy Rainey is here because she has personal communications from Tippa Countyans during World War II and he's interested on how to use it and how to preserve it and how to put it where other people can use it. Uh, Mike and Pam are here because uh, they love having lunch with friends. That's exactly <laughs> what they are. Uh, and uh, also they're going catfishing at Providence Cemetery as soon as this meeting is over. Uh, and tomorrow, Mike. Uh, tomorrow? Going up and, and you're welcome, Jerry. Anybody wants to go to meet catfish at 2 o'clock at Muddy Creek Cafe or downtown Boston? Mm -hmm. 2 o'clock? Just, uh, just about a 20, 10 minute drive. Probably. No trip today. It's, it's, Scheduled tomorrow. for tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be warm. Okay, then any of y'all go to church on Wednesday night? <laughs> this won't take us long. Oh, okay. Can't this this no. won't take us just a... I, I'm the preacher. They expect me to be there. I mean, I... <laughs> 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 they expect me. Uh, okay, what else? Now, here's what I'm going to do today. Huh? We'll get you back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going. Uh, if nothing else is wrong, we're going. Uh, our, our program was presented by Melissa McCoy Bell from the Tippa County page of Rootsville. Now, here's what I need to say. Anybody that hyphenates their last name probably don't want to be called a web master. <laughs> That's sexist. And if I say web mistress, it sounds what, what, what's your what's your job description? My my job? <laughs> <laughs> when we refer when we refer to Roots Web and the Tippa County. Website coordinator. Oh, I like that. I like that. Right. Please write that down for my future references. Coordinator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are. Uh, there's a friend of mine from uh, uh, from Olive Branch that I just met. He came here to look up his relatives, uh, and he told me as though you know it was something we were doing and Melissa's doing it. Uh, but he said, you know, every time we have a meeting of the uh, of the Olive Branch Historical Society. Uh, people are just generous with their praise for the Roots Web page, Tip account. Uh, and he said, so is the Tennessee Historical Society. I don't know, something, I guess he went there. He said, it's the same thing wherever you go. Uh, people are, are, are crazy about this work. And I tell you what, I started out in the library before I had a, my own computer. And uh, when I got mine, I learned to bookmark so I could put your page. I could go to it. Uh, we have contributed to it. Uh, there's also a connection with Find a Grave now that you're going to find helpful. Uh, you just can't talk about uh, the Confederates of Tippecanoe County without going to that page. Uh, there are obituaries and cemeteries, uh, death notices. Uh, there are uh, there who connecting families. Uh, it's it's. You just. <laughs> there's, there's, you can't do Tippecanoe kind County of research without it. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful page. It's, it's constructed. Uh, it's easy to navigate. Uh, the material is just there waiting on you, and that's why you're here. And you can talk about uh, the material that you'd like to have or scan or whatever. And we appreciate you coming. Thank you.
I've not always been a genealogist, but always known that, you know, that my roots were in deep in Tippa. So I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad y'all have such a good society with a lot of members. That's great, because it, you've gone through some times when it hadn't been so many, and I've benefited from that, um, simply because most societies um, don't like it when you give their information away for free, and um, that's, that's what I've done. So, uh, <laughs> it's true, but anyway, a little about me. I'm, um, my maiden name is McCoy, and I hyphenated because I was a genealogist, and, and my main family is McCoy, and I wanted to keep that. Um, and so I kept it. And then I had um, all my great aunts tell me they wish they had done the same thing. <laughs> so uh, I feel very blessed to still keep McCoy because um, it's a bit near, near and dear to my heart. And uh, I knew Melissa Bell, and I didn't like her. So anyway, <laughs> I, I kept McCoy for that reason. Um, but I'm from Walnut. Like I said, I was born and raised there. Family's been there forever. I went to Northeast Mississippi Junior College. And from there, I transferred to the University of Memphis, and that's where I graduated with my bachelor's degree. Um, I have been working for Delta, well, Northwest and Delta Airlines since 1996. About the same time, I got my first computer and, um, and decided that uh, I could put my family history on the computer. Um, you know, I don't know if you re remember, but Windows came out in 95 and everybody got a computer that they could actually use for a change. And so I was one of those people. And the first software I bought was Family Tree Maker. And I started loading in my family history and I decided that, uh, that I could write a book. Because dying it was so easy. So uh, I never wrote the book. An easier thing to do is to create a family page with all your family information, and that's what I did. And uh, the coolest thing about having a family page is that you can change it, and it can grow, and it can be corrected. It's not like a published book that can't be corrected. And so, so with my new page, um, I started researching on the internet, and Roots Web had just started. They started in 1996 in Kentucky. And they, they started US Gen Web, which they gave each state a main page, and then under that, all the county pages. And that's what Tippa County was. Well, after I had just made this great page on this for free for my family, I decided that I was a webmaster. So I offered to take Tippa because it had nothing on it. You know, the, the people that were doing the web pages at that time had 30 pages. They had pages in Arkansas, pages in Alabama, and, and the lady that had Tippa had a lot of pages and didn't have any link to Tippa County. And I was just devastated because I just knew it should be a representation of Tippa County. And uh, there was nothing to research on it. There was a place to put your surnames and a place to do your um, queries, but there was really no information to research. So I just thought there should be. So I, I volunteered to take this um, county, not really knowing how to make web pages. And then I had to um, commandeer people that knew how to make web pages to teach me. <laughs> and that's how I got started in 1997. And so um, after a little time went by, um, I came down to the library and introduced myself to Tommy. And I think at that time y'all had three members or three active members. And he says, well, I said, I said, well, I would really like to have the 1850 census to put online since it's the first one that has any decent information. And he says, we'll take it. So I sat there and copied the census, and I went back to my house, and I scanned all those pages in, and then I would send them to this friend of mine that knew how to convert it to text, and he would send it back to me, and then I would convert it to HTML and upload it to the web page. We did that for every census that's on the, the Tippa County page, and the marriage records, and the grave records, and, and and at this time I was working part time and I had a whole lot of time. My children ate burned food and, and my husband went hungry. <laughs> but we, we actually got it done. And, and the interesting thing about that was uh, the gentleman that helped me was Fred Cox, and um, he lives in Maryland. So we were able to, we'd never met, and he was just a great volunteer, and he would help me. And then he would, he would say, well, we don't have this. And I'm like, okay, you're right, we don't have that. So I would go back to the library and I'd say, Tommy, can we, have, can we have the 1840 now? And he'd say, sure. I said, nobody cares. And he goes, no, we only have three members. And I would give me another thing and I would do the same thing. So um, 
that's how we got started and accomplishing um, putting all the searchable data online. Uh, one of the good things that Fred came up with later was to recreate the burn marriage records. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but during the Civil War, the, the marriage records were burned. And the land records were there, but the marriage records burned in the courthouse. And so we started trying to um, get submissions of, of people that actually had marriage records before 1861 or whenever that was. I think 1858. Yeah, you know, 58 was the last. And we have over 200 marriage records that we've recreated online, and that continues to grow. And so that, that's one of the great things about having such a good page on the internet is that people are involved in. Um, some things that have changed, and just you know, recently with Ancestry being humongous, Ancestry actually bought Roots Web, um, and that was difficult for some people. It was not difficult for me because I happen to think a lot of Ancestry. Um, Roots Web has always been free information for people to search, and of course, you know, Ancestry charges, but you get more for what you pay for, and I believe Ancestry is worth it. Um, you know, if any of you have used it, how many in here have used Ancestry? You know it's worth it. You got the actual document. I can't recreate that. They can. And so I'm, I'm a firm believer. Pay your 20 bucks a month and, and get your Ancestry. And, and don't expect the poor little people like me to do it for free. <laughs> because it is just a, a tremendous amount. You know, you click on that link, you have the actual document right there in front of you. You see, you see who the neighbors are. You see who... You flip over, oh my gosh, there's Cousin Joe. I mean, you know, and you can flip through each census page. There's, a, there's no, in the comfort of your living room. That, that to me, you save $5 on gas, just that one trip to go to, to the library to look at the census records or on the microfilm thing where you're scanning through. So I, I'm just a huge supporter of Ancestry. I have the app on my phone. I can pull up my, <laughs> if I'm at somebody's, house that doesn't have the internet, I can pull up my whole family tree scroll and show them 20 pictures of, you know, that I've uploaded, and it's just a great thing. It's a great way to keep your tree. Um, when I was helping Dr. Wolf King with, with her book that she did on Faulkner, I don't know if y'all remember when she came to the Faulkner Festival a year ago, um, she was trying to research the Faulkner family and the Leak family, so I created trees on Ancestry and was able to help her. Just and to find out, to find living relatives. I wasn't going back, so you can actually use Ancestry to find living relatives, and that's how you find your old pictures and things like that. We were looking for pictures of these two people that lived in Holly Springs, but this is a pretty neat book. She she was. Um, it's based on the fact uh, that and this gentleman lived in Salem from 1830 uh, to 18. 62 or so when he died in the Civil War, and he kept a really in-depth diary, and uh, and it's good reading for his historical value for Tippa County is because um, he dealt in and out of Ripley a lot. He lived in Salem. Um, it it lists I got six marriages out of the diary just because he would say who got married, you know. So it's it's a really interesting thing. It's all online. You can read it in his handwriting or you can read it um, digitized. But anyway, uh, it's pretty interesting. But when we were researching this, I used Ancestry. But what Ancestry has done is it has changed what we need to put on the Tippa County webpage, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm excited about today. Um, since since they're taking care of all of the searchable data, what we need to do at our to enhance the page now is to add to our memory section. And what I did was make a copy of what's on the memory section now, and it's not in depth, it's just an outline. Each one of these underlined things is a link to a more in depth uh, of what that topic is. So anyway, I'm just gonna pass this around because you will see there are gaping holes in what's online about the different communities. And what I also did was um, I printed out a few things that are in that are the links if you like to look for To give you an example of what's beyond this page, if you don't know already, if you hadn't been online to see it.
And um, this is the page. This page right, this picture right here is probably 120 years old. It's of downtown Brownfield. Um, the railroad runs right through it. There's a picture of the cotton gin. There's a picture of the depot. There's a picture of the uh, Dr. Ford's clinic, which was, um, he was well known in Tippa County. He did have a name. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then there's a school picture, and Brownfield no longer exists. There's nothing there. There's not a store there. It's a few houses, um, but it's not there anymore. And this, this preserves it. And you can add to, you know, I can add more pictures to this. But there are other communities that aren't represented at all in the memory section. And that's what I'm hoping that we can find more pictures of and, and get some history online of each of the communities in Tippecanoe County. Any questions? <laughs> Do you, have you found anything on Jonesboro? Um, I have a few, few little things on Jonesboro. I think I have one picture of a store, the black Blackjack? Was Mr. It? Black store. Mr. Black store. First building in Northern Mississippi. Yeah, he was on the old stagecoach line to Pocahontas. I have a, a fallen down picture mm. picture of that. I don't remember. I can't find Think so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but that's really all. And Jonesboro is a really old community too. Um, a lot went on there. A lot went on there. I was going to say I was trying to decide when. You know, you've all have you all heard the story about the McCannon murders? Um, that was William Faulkner's first, uh, Colonel Faulkner's first way he made money. You know, he sold um, the pamphlets about McCannon um, at his hanging. You know, and well, the, the McCannon murders happened somewhere I, near as I can find between Brownfield and Jonesboro. It had to have been in that area. In fact. Jack Elliott did a little bit of research on that, and it was on Sterling Nancy Keep, which is my husband's uh, great great grandfather's land. That's where that happened. Really? Yeah. But I mean, it had to be. They were saying North Mississippi. It had to be. I mean, North Tippa County. So it had to be in that area. So it had to be. I remember that thing that was. Somebody said it was the old twin Ruckersville and 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 Jonesboro. Really? The old Ridley to Yeah. Ridley to Pocahontas Road. I'm not going to know where that was. No, I just thought it was a sterling means of peace um, land, so I don't know where that was at that time. I'd have to get Did they have to be out there long enough? That's Sarah Baker's uh, people. Well, now, the, Keats, Sarah Baker. the, the Keats did not live where they live now at that time. Okay. They're um, all buried there. Some old Keith Cemetery. Right. Are you talking about that? Keith Cemetery. Keith Cemetery. Right up on, almost a straight line. Call it Muddy yeah. Ridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. That's not where I was New talking about. Bethel. Okay. Old Bethel Cemetery. Bethel Cemetery. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know where the Keith Cemetery is. Yeah. Matter of fact, I know where the Keith Cemetery is. Close to the state line. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you stuck in the woods. I did. You did. I did. Yeah. 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 Knock on the door in the van that lives right in front of it there. Uh -huh. uh, he's offered to take me to the location of the murders and things like that. Yes, he probably does. I forgot to say, tell about one other thing. Sarah Baker This is a new book that's out. I don't know if y'all have seen it or not. It's another Arcadia book. Um, it's it's uh, Remembering Mississippi's Confederates. I was, and this just goes to show you that you can find history and memories in odd places okay. because um, my aunt and uncle uh, live in Pensacola, Florida, and I, I, that's my second home. I, I was raised going down there, their daughter's my age, and we're like sisters. Well, um, so I've been there forever, and lots and lots of times. Well, I was um, looking for this particular picture because it had hung on my grandmother's wall for years and it was framed and it was as big as that, but you know, sideways. And it was in one of those oak and gold frames and it's a charcoal of an ancestor that I didn't remember who it was. I just knew that I needed to have that picture because I was on Ancestry and I had to have as many pictures as I could. So anyway, so I'm looking for this picture and she goes, oh, I don't know where that is. She said, I gave it to Kenny and his girlfriend was scared of the sword. So she gave it, he gave it back and I stuck it somewhere. Anyway, she comes, so she comes out with this picture. Ooh. 
she comes out with this picture in an ambrotype. It's about, you know, how big those were. They're a little bitty. And this is my great-great-grandfather in a Civil War uniform. Now, I've been doing research for a really long time. Do you know how upsetting it was that I found this two years ago? And <laughs> she had had it all that time. <laughs> what year was he in? He was in, uh, he was in the Tip Tigers. Okay, really? Yeah. Oh, 23rd Mississippi Infantry. He okay, was. Great. So the, the first thing I did, because I'm there on vacation, of course, and I don't have my scanner, is I located a place that did have a really good scanner. Now, I was able to take this first picture, which is, is humongous, and this picture, and get good scans of them. Now, when I say good scans, you're going to have to ask them for the highest definition scan mm -hmm. they can do. And you don't want it too big. But you do want it over 300 dots per inch DPI. So if you're in a location where you can take a photo somewhere really quick and get it, that's what you need to do. Then you haven't, you know, because she was not letting me out of the state with these two pictures. Even though she handed me this one and said, I don't know who he is, do you? <laughs> Actually, it was that one. And I, I had probably 10 pictures of him, and I didn't know there were was one that existed with him in the Civil War year. Anyway, so I was very, so when they decided they were doing this book, I was able to donate those pictures and I was very excited about that. Hmm. So if you want to preserve your heritage, you know, What's the name of the book? make sure, it's the uh, Mississippi, Remembering Mississippi Confederates. It just came out in October. It's a great Christmas book? present. I, it where can you purchase that book? I guess it's probably at your better bookstores or I, Maybe at 7-Eleven, I don't know. I mean, um, I, I actually, I wanted signed copy, so we, I, I have his address, so if you want to contact me. You can get his address. And we're selling the Duncan's Pharmacy in Walmart, right at the counter, a little box up there. They no, have that was on the Tipper County. Tipper County. Oh, they do have this one, too? History of Tipper County, another one by, uh, by Adam, uh, who was that, Ellen Wildman, about Faulkner. Yeah. And then there's another one. That came right there, twenty one ninety five. dollars 95 That's what it was selling for. Did he have his signing in the museum? This was months ago. He didn't. I tried to get in here for the Faulkner Festival. Well, there would be I couldn't arrange it. Yeah, I couldn't get him. I, he's from Jackson. This is another one that I uh, donated to. And this is the McIntyre uh, brothers. This is Bill and James McIntyre. Bill was actually the county clerk here in Ripley uh, around the turn of the century. And is listed in the... Uh, What's that book about? Prominent oh. Citizens of Mississippi that was published around 1890. He was actually in that book. That's my uh, great great grandfather. Yeah, Rumor, there's sure rumored to be a uh, sure is. a picture of them in their Civil War. He he actually served with Faulkner, and uh, they're identical twins. But um, one of them didn't snuff, so you can tell. That's my granddad. Jeff, K-G-I-A-M-B-R-O-N-E. I think I got an email from him wanting pictures. You probably did, yeah. Oh, you did? It may be in there. That's exciting. Spell that last name again. G-I-A-M-B-R-O-N-E. It's G-I-A-A-M. B-R-O-N-E. Thank you. Pam, you can get his address off of Facebook and order it directly from him and he'll sign it for you. Oh, is he on Facebook? <clears throat> He's got a Facebook page himself? I'm sure he does. I, um, well, it's that Remember Mississippi Confederates is the name of Facebook page. We need to get one of those for our UDC building. Did anybody bring any pictures they want to? Me to scan real quick and take home or letters or stories. Or I things. brought some pictures if you want to scan them, but not necessarily. Um, the things we're looking for in the memory yeah. section, just to clarify, um, what what I like to do is, and I've had to do this for years. Um, I cannot write your family history for you, so do not give me your family pictures. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've had to go, I mean, I, I work full time and have, you know, grandchildren. But uh, anyway, <laughs> um, oh. what I like to, is. Grandchildren? Yeah, three grandchildren. 
my daughter has been very prolific. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> I need the pictures, of course. And um, but what I like is is pictures of old country stores, church gatherings, homecomings, um, you know, the post office, the depot, the you know, the things that that allow people that don't live here uh, to get a feeling of what we're all about. Uh, the family histories can be very, I mean, the family stories or letters or that can be real personal. I think a lot of them include a lot of information that help people. Um, but as far as, um, I'll do family reunions and that's pretty much where I draw the line. If, if you want a lot of your old family pictures online, I suggest you build a web page and I'll link to it. But as far as scanning in all your old family pictures and putting them on the our Tippa County page, I, I don't have time. I'm but I'm but I you, you don't? Can you see that, please? Uh, anyway. So that that's I mean well, it's kinda right. like it's kinda like uh, Dwayne's book here, you know, he didn't put family. I mean he didn't really put family in. I, I so that's Well I brought a picture of uh, when they built the overpass in Ripley. Did you really? Well, there's a few of the uh, work up there at the time. Do you find any linkage between the Red and Deer, Hatfield, and the Collies? I tried to do but Everybody in my family was trying to get me to look up the links. Um, if we link to the Hatfields and McCoys, we go before. Because, you know, we've been here since 1837. So, uh, yeah, so you'd have to go back to North Carolina and trace the tree back up. And there you go. And the tree gets real confusing around 1780. There's about 14 Williams. So um, there was a couple trees that kind of had the same lady in it, this Cordelia Campbell, which is supposed to be the, the Hatfield McCoy, the McCoy family from the Hatfields is not well documented. It goes back two generations before that feud, and that is it. So that's Well, that deer in the hatch, you know, I reckon all you be friends with the hatch. Yeah, but could you believe how mean those Hatfields were? They tried to blame it on us being sick. <laughs> oh, that's cool. We're going to publish, we're going to sell uh, a calendar. Uh, oh, good. And it's going to be old church buildings uh, now, is the way we're looking at it. Uh, how do we link to you any information you want relative to that? Or our pictures or old ones we find in school? I can solicit you pictures. Okay. She's going to help us find pictures can. of old Tippecanoe kind of churches. Okay. I can repair old photographs. I scan them in and use this cloning tool thing if you get some that are damaged. What program, um, what program do you have for that? For you know, a lot of people that. use Photoshop. I mean, and and Photoshop is too complicated for me. So I use this one that came free with my scanner. It's called the ArcSoft Photo Studio, and I think you actually have to pay for it now, but um, it came free with a Canon scanner. It's called ArcSoft Photo Studio. But now I do know people, and I try to even take class on Photoshop. Maybe I just didn't have a good version, but um, my, my cousin Earl uses Photoshop all the time, and he he's phenomenal with it. I mean, because you can sort of kind of say, you know how things are grainy or spots are missing off of, you can kind of tell Photoshop to, to fix everything that's like that, you yeah. know, and that's you kind of cool. one area without doing the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. The one we've got. I, I just, I just tap. Yeah. I, you know, if there's a chunk missing here, I, I clone right next to it and I tap it over. Yeah. That's what and, that's yeah. 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 We have photo draw. Photo but it's, draw. Uh, but it's, I might have something a little bit better. Yeah. Well, the, the new Photoshop's are supposed to be awesome. I just, mm. I don't have, I haven't had really the time, and I'm not disappointed with ArcSoft, so I haven't spent a whole lot of time learning how to use it. Yeah. <coughs> but that's cool that y'all are going to upgrade your scanning. Yeah, you can do a lot Yeah, you can do a lot of paint. <laughs> But the cloning tool is important. You have to be able to clone. You have to be able to do it easy. Mm -hmm. This one basically you hit shift and, and click, and then you just dot that little spot that's missing over. Yeah. I mean, you can make it real big and duplicate a whole button. You know, mm -hmm. chunk missing out in front of the shirt, or you know. Mm -hmm. Gracias.
Bringing Out Church. See it? Then I've got the first book. Uh, <laughs> first book of me. And the third book of me. So you got anything else? I, I've got to get back on that. <laughs> I've got most of the copy. Well, you know, Bruce, Bruce Ingram, they taught at Fault or got in his class to do so much of that. It was fabulous. Um, however, he sent it to me digitized, and, and I, can't, I do not have time to digitize it if it's not digital. Um, this, I, I just got the print out, the printed copy. Yeah. But I, and I don't have it on, I mean, I. I've lost it off my computer. Yeah, I can, sc I can scan, so, scan it and OCR. Is it? That's fine. I mean, we did some. Uh, the first, from 1836 to about 1880. That's awesome. That's some great and stuff. And I sort of, I didn't that index it completely, but I did put down the, the dates. If you could get somebody to digitize it, that would really help me. Um, <laughs> if you can, I'll, I will get to it. It will not be fast. But if you send it to me digitized, I can just flat out upload it. And then, because it, there's a whole lot of editing that goes on after you put it on an HTML document page because it throws everything askew, and then you gotta you gotta go back in there, and you know, you know and then, so for me to have to scan it all and by myself. I didn't work full time. I knew you were dedicated to the time. I didn't know what I didn't know what do you do I didn't know full time. I work for Delta Airlines. Okay. In the Sky Club in the Memphis International right, Airport. Right, I know all those old pilots. Do you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, we still see a few of them. Yeah. But um, anyway, I've done that for almost 17 years. What McCoy would you use? Um my first McCoy in Tippecanoe County that bought the land patent was Abner. And he had a whole pass of of children. Uh, we're, we're related to Cooper Harrell. We're related to uh, my grandfather was Doug McCoy. Oh my goodness. Do you know him? <laughs> sure I knew Doug McCoy. Um, my brother is Jay. He's the principal at Walnut. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, my dad was Joe. Well, my daddy was Luther Luna, and his daddy was oh, Abner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the bank. Well, well, then we're cousins. Yeah. No, it's probably the most. Let's see. Let me think how. Well, the Lunas. I can't remember right off the top of my head. Let me get my app. And it's Wanda. Yeah, now Wanda, I still uh, I touch base with a lot. She lives in New Jersey. All right. Yeah, and Ani has passed away. And the last time I saw her, she was dressed like a gypsy and had been up traveling in Europe. Oh, really? <laughs> I can tell you a lot about. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now both of those girls were pretty girls. They were sweet girls. And they hightailed it out of Tippecanoe as fast as they could. Uh, she's helped me a lot, though. She's given me a lot of old pictures. I've got, I've got some pictures of William Faulkner. His uh, daughter married my doctor, Carter. Oh, really? And I have her children. And Harden, I've talked to Harden, Carter. And uh, the did others, you bring those pictures up? Uh, I wish you had <laughs> some of those. I didn't know. And uh, one of the boys from the next two generations <laughs> came out and spent a day with me, and I took him to the old Greenfield Cemetery where no, they lived and all of right their place. <laughs> and I got that history it's a book. I got a lot of those. We need to get it scanned so it'll be for the ages. Do you want to stand that?